Losing an animal sucks. If you've bull hunted for any amount of time, it's happened to you. And while bull hunters don't agree on much, we all agree on one thing. Losing an animal sucks. Hi, this is the Innovative Outdoorsman, and this whole COVID-19 thing has me social distancing in my basement. And all of my traveling hunts have been canceled. Some are postponed, but I'm doing my part staying at home, and it's giving me a little bit of time to go through my gear and to check out some new gear. I'm looking at this new product from Kirch. This is the, their XTN Bloodhound Tracking Knot. If you spend any time online, every fall you see the same story. Hey, I got a great hit on one. Can't find it. Does anybody have a bloodhound? Does anybody have a tracking dog? I've hit a really nice one. The blood disappeared. I can't find it. Well, this product addresses that. That's why it's called the bloodhound. This is a tracking knock. Um, blood trails peter out. We lose animals. We lose the ability to find them. They cross water, they go through an area that doesn't leave blood. We, we just can't find them. So this product addresses that. Now here's a disclaimer. I was approached by this company to help them bring this product to life. They asked me to do the engineering, CAD design, prototyping, life testing, and ultimately a lot of hunts where we could put this to the test. And right now hunts are on the back burner with this whole coronavirus. But it gives me time to look through this product and this is an early prototype. Now we're already on later stages with improvements after some uh, testing. Uh, but I want to go through some of the basics with you. You pull out your existing knock. and you slip in the blood trailer knock. Uh, it's got metal barbs and I'll insert a bunch of close-up pictures that'll help you uh, understand it better. But there are metal barbs and those when you shoot an animal the pass-through is what we all expect. And with this product, the pass-through results in these fins hitting the side of the animal and stopping. But these barbs catching on the flesh and the hide and barbing into the animal so it can't come out. Should you not get a pass-through, this device stays in the arrow. And we've all seen it, arrow animals running off with the arrow sticking out of them. This item uh, will continue to stay with the animal for as long as the arrow is in it. Upon launch of the arrow, the device triggers, setting off two really bright LEDs. Now, most lighted knocks have a single LED. This one's got two super bright LEDs. On top of that, it illuminates the entire clear plastic housing. So this whole orange plastic is a tremendous beacon. So it serves as a visual Hey, there's my arrow, there's the animal, I can see it. But it also acts as a telemetry device. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time down here explaining all that. I'm going to be going outside and I'll be shooting it, showing you the gripping force into, since I don't have any animals right now that I can hunt, I'll do a mock-up showing you the barbing into the, uh, the test that I'll do. But more so, I want to show you the product itself. I'm going to have my wife literally hide this somewhere from me out in the woods, way in the back. She's not going to tell me where it is, so I've got to power up this device and find it. Now, I'll be looking for just this. In the real world, you'll be looking for this attached to a deer, an elk, a bear, whatever you hunt. Uh, so you'll be looking, like you normally do when you track for an animal, you're looking for the animal. You've got the sign, but you're physically looking for the carcass. In this case, I'll only be looking for this, relying on the Kirch Bloodhound to get me there. So 
without further ado, let's get outside and do a little shooting and then put this thing through its paces both daytime and nighttime. It's got a, a illuminated uh, display so you can use it at night. And let's go outside and give it a try. All right, now we're going to look at the charging. So the knock itself includes a battery inside with a circuit board with the antenna, the LED, and the charging posts. In order to charge it, there is a charger, and there are a couple of little fins or a little bumps on the fins that prevent you from plugging it in wrong. And on the charger, there are receptacles to make sure you plug it in right. You simply slide it in. And now the knock will sit here and blink while it's charging. Now this is an early version. Uh, the production version will have features that let you know when it's fully charged. When it's done charging, pull it out. Now it's still going to blink. Each unit will come with a magnet and, and there will actually be a tool that will be used for turning the knocks and include a magnet on it. But you just simply pass the magnet over the... There we go. Pass the magnet over the board and it'll turn the blinking off. The blinking and the emissions happen upon the release of the knock. So when you shoot your game animal this item turns on, starts emitting to the receiver uh, and will blink with the dual LED lights. They're super bright and there's two LED lights. That's how you charge it and with a magnet that's how you turn it off for while it's sitting in your quiver. Alright, so now you can see that the product stayed on the outside surface of the hide, in this case it's a tan piece of leather, the arrow got a pass through, and then the barbs would be in the flesh and the hide. Now I'm going to try to pull that out to show you how it holds. See, it, it doesn't want to come out, and then when I get to the hide, it really doesn't want to come out. Those barbs are embedded into the animal. So it's not going to pull out, it's going to stay with the animal for You can see the barbs, and as I try to pull them out, they catch, leaving it in the hide or in the meat. I've had my wife hide the bloodhound tracking knock somewhere out in the woods behind the house. I've got no idea where it is and now it's my job to use the unit to track it. So I'm going to open it up. I'll hit the power button. All right. So you can see the dog. On the left you see the handheld unit I'm holding and its battery power. Now I'm going to say scan for a knock. There's six that it could choose from. Alright, so she's hidden knock number one. Now I'm going to hit track to try to find it. searching for that particular knock. Alright, so it says I'm 21% away. Waiting for it to give me a directional.
All right, so it's saying straight ahead. On the right hand side you're seeing the battery power of the knock itself. It must be pretty far away. There you can see the battery power of the knock. So she's got it pretty far out here. Alright, it's got me turning. Sorry about the glare on the screen. Oh, now it's got me going straight. Now I'm going to, because this is probably going to be a pretty fairly long walk, I'm going to end up speeding this up. So the signal strength is growing. It's at 26%. Nope, the directional arrow told me to turn a little bit, so I will. I'll just stop here for a second. This is the woods that I'm walking in. All right, I'm going to pause here for a second. I can see the signal strength is growing. The directional arrow, yep, it's saying straight ahead. So it must be somewhere on the opposite side of this hill where she's hidden it. I'll keep going. Now you can see the signal strength is really high and it's telling me I need to take a sharp right. So I do. It's a brush pile in front of me so I'm going to walk around it. And it's telling me to turn around the brush pile. Saying to turn sharp left. Percentage is pretty darn high now, 99%, so I gotta be close. Alright, now so it's saying it's behind me. Now it's saying it's in front of me, so she must have hit it in this brush pile. Now I'm looking for a small little knock where you'd be looking for an actual deer. So as I keep looking at it and sitting here and spinning, and now I can see it right there. So I'm looking for just this, whereas a typical hunter would be looking for a deer, a bear, an elk, some sort of an animal. And now, of course, you can see it's at 99%, so I found it. So it worked pretty effective. I will plot a map. I'll show you how far I actually traveled. So here I am at night now, and we're going to see if we can see the knock. That knock is 60 yards away. Alright, here we are on top of the arrow now. Two very bright LEDs. I'll turn on the cell phone light.
All right, let's look at this at night. I'm going to turn off the cell phone light and mess around with the display because we'll see how this works. All right, now I will hit the power button. And then the light button. All right, I don't know how this is. Okay, it's going to look good, pretty good. Now I'm going to hit scan. Scan tells me that it's looking for knock number one. Now I'm going to hit track. And let's go look for that knock. You can see above the dog's wagging tail as I turn. So there's a directional arrow that you just saw. There it is, it's blinking. So I'm going to start walking toward that direction. All right, so it's telling me to turn. Now I'm going to purposely turn hard right as if I'm walking around a tree. So you can see that arrow is telling me the direction to go. So I'm going to turn back toward the knock and start walking toward it. So it's giving me an indication. There you see it's at 95%. So it's telling me I'm pretty close. Keep walking. Now I'm going to turn hard left. Again, it's going to give me the direction. Turn back right. Take me to the knock. What are we at for percentage now? 97, so I'm getting closer. Ninety-nine percent, so I'm right up on it. So I'm going to turn hard right. I see the arrow saying, hey dummy, turn. As I turn, there it goes back. And there you can see the knock blinking. Now you're not always going to be able to see the knock blinking if the animal lays on the arrow. You'll have to rely strictly on the screen. So it's got a great nighttime feature as well.